Asteroid Impact Avoidance, Wikipedia Article Audio Asteroid impact avoidance comprises a number of methods by which near-Earth objects could be diverted, preventing destructive impact events. A sufficiently large impact by an asteroid or other NEOS would cause, depending on its impact location, massive tsunamis, multiple firestorms, and an impact winter caused by the sunlight blocking effect of placing large quantities of pulverized rock dust, and other debris, into the stratosphere. A collision between the Earth and an approximately 10 km wide object 66 million years ago is thought to have produced the Sheikhsalub crater and the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event, widely held responsible for the extinction of most dinosaurs. Deflection Efforts History of Government Mandates while the chances of a major collision are not great in the near term, there is a high probability that one will happen eventually unless defensive actions are taken. Recent astronomical events such as the Shoemaker-Levy 9 impacts on Jupiter and the 2013 Chelyabinsk meteor along with the growing number of objects on the Sentry Risk Table have drawn renewed attention to such threats. NASA warns that the Earth is unprepared for such an event. Most deflection efforts for a large object require from a year to decades of warning, allowing time to prepare and carry out a collision avoidance project, as no known planetary defense hardware has yet been developed. It has been estimated that a velocity change of just 3.5-t times 10 to ms1 is needed to successfully deflect a body on a direct collision trajectory. In addition, under certain circumstances, much smaller velocity changes are needed. For example, it was estimated there was a high chance of 99,942 apophis swinging by Earth in 2029 with a 10-4 probability of passing through a keyhole and returning on an impact trajectory in 2035 or 2036. It was then determined that a deflection from this potential return trajectory, several years before the swing by, could be achieved with a velocity change on the order of 10.6 ms1. An impact by a 10 km asteroid on the Earth has historically caused an extinction-level event due to catastrophic damage to the biosphere. There is also the threat from comets coming into the inner solar system. The impact speed of a long-period comet would likely be several times greater than that of a near-Earth asteroid making its impact much more destructive, in addition, the warning time is unlikely to be more than a few months. Impacts from objects as small as 50 meters in diameter, which are far more common, are historically extremely destructive regionally. Finding out the material composition of the object is also helpful before deciding which strategy is appropriate. Missions like the 2005 Deep Impact Probe have provided valuable information on what to expect. The 1992 NASA-sponsored Near-Earth Object Interception Workshop hosted by Los Alamos National Laboratory evaluated issues involved in intercepting celestial objects that could hit Earth. In a 1992 report to NASA, a coordinated space guard survey was recommended to discover, verify, and provide follow-up observations for Earth-crossing asteroids. This survey was expected to discover 90% of these objects larger than 1 km within 25 years. Three years later, another NASA report recommended search surveys that would discover 60-70% of short period near-Earth objects larger than 1 km within 10 years and obtain 90% completeness within 5 more years. Ongoing Projects In 1998, NASA formally embraced the goal of finding and cataloging, by 2008. 90% of all near-Earth objects with diameters of 1 km or larger that could represent a collision risk to Earth. 
The 1 km diameter metric was chosen after considerable study indicated that an impact of an object smaller than 1 km could cause significant local or regional damage but is unlikely to cause a worldwide catastrophe. The impact of an object much larger than 1 km diameter could well result in Indiana worldwide damage up to, and potentially including, extinction of the human species. The NASA commitment has resulted in the funding of a number of NEO search efforts that are making considerable progress toward the 90% goal by 2008. The 2009 discovery of a NEO approximately 2 to 3 km in diameter demonstrated there were still large objects to be detected. United States Representative George E. Brown Jr. was quoted as voicing his support for planetary defense projects in air and space power chronicles, saying if someday in the future we discover well in advance that an asteroid that is big enough to cause a mass extinction is going to hit the Earth, and then we alter the course of that asteroid so that it does not hit us, it will be one of the most important accomplishments in all of human history. Sentinel Mission because of Congressman Brown's long-standing commitment to planetary defense, a U.S. House of Representatives bill, H.R. 1022, was named in his honor, the George E. Brown, J.R. Near-Earth Object Survey Act. This bill to provide for a near-Earth object survey program to detect, track, catalog, and characterize certain near-Earth asteroids and comets was introduced in March 2005 by Rep. Dana Rohrabacher. It was eventually rolled into S.1281, the NASA Authorization Act of 2005, passed by Congress on December 22, 2005, subsequently signed by the President, and stating in part, the U.S. Congress has declared that the general welfare and security of the United States require that the unique competence of NASA be directed to detecting, tracking, cataloging, and characterizing near-Earth asteroids and comets in order to provide warning and mitigation of the potential hazard of such near-Earth objects to the Earth. The NASA Administrator shall plan, develop, and implement a near-Earth objects survey program to detect, track, catalog, and characterize the physical characteristics of near-Earth objects equal to or greater than 140 meters in diameter in order to assess the threat of such near-Earth objects to the Earth. It shall be the goal of the survey program to achieve 90% completion of its near-Earth object catalog within 15 years after the date of enactment of this act. The NASA Administrator shall transmit to Congress not later than one year after the date of enactment of this Act an initial report that provides the following, an analysis of possible alternatives that NASA may employ to carry out the survey program, including ground-based and space-based alternatives with technical descriptions. A recommended option and proposed budget to carry out the survey program pursuant to the recommended option. Analysis of possible alternatives that NASA could employ to divert an object on a likely collision course with Earth. The result of this directive was a report presented to Congress in early March 2007. This was an analysis of alternatives study led by NASA's Program Analysis and Evaluation Office with support from outside consultants, the Aerospace Corporation, NASA Langley Research Center, and SAIC. Prospective Projects The Minor Planet Center in Cambridge, Massachusetts has been cataloging the orbits of asteroids and comets since 1947. It has recently been joined by surveys which specialize in locating the near-Earth objects many funded by NASA's Near-Earth Object Program Office as part of their Space Guard program. One of the best known is Linear that began in 1996. 
By 2004 Linear was discovering tens of thousands of objects each year and accounting for 65% of all new asteroid detections. Linear uses two 1-meter telescopes and one half meter telescope based in New Mexico. Detection from Space Spacewatch, which uses a 90-centimeter telescope sighted at the Kitt Peak Observatory in Arizona, updated with automatic pointing, imaging, and analysis equipment to search the skies for intruders, was set up in 1980 by Tom Gearls and Robert S. McMillan of the Lunar and Planetary Laboratory of the University of Arizona in Tucson, and is now being operated by McMillan. The Space Watch project has acquired a 1.8-meter telescope, also at Kitt Peak, to hunt for NEOS, and has provided the old 90-centimeter telescope with an improved electronic imaging system with much greater resolution, improving its search capability. Deep Impact Other near-Earth object tracking programs include near-Earth asteroid tracking, Lowell Observatory Near-Earth Objects Search, Catalina Sky Survey, Campo Imperator Near-Earth Objects Survey, Japanese Space Guard Association, and Asiago DLR Asteroid Survey. PanSTARS completed telescope construction in 2010, and it is now actively observing. The Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, now in operation, conducts frequent scans of the sky with a view to later stage detection on the collision stretch of the asteroid orbit. Those would be much too late for deflection, but still in time for evacuation and preparation of the affected Earth region. Impact Probability Calculation Pattern Another project, supported by the European Union, is NEO Shield, which analyzes realistic options for preventing the collision of a NEO with Earth. Their aim is to provide test mission designs for feasible NEO mitigation concepts. The project particularly emphasizes on two aspects. Space Guard is the name for these loosely affiliated programs, some of which receive NASA funding to meet a U.S. congressional requirement to detect 90% of near Earth asteroids over 1 km diameter by 2008. A 2003 NASA study of a follow-on program suggests spending US$ $250-$450 million to detect 90% of all near-Earth asteroids 140 meters and larger by 2028. NEOD is an online database of known NEOs. The B612 Foundation is a private non-profit foundation with headquarters in the United States dedicated to protecting the Earth from asteroid strikes. It is led mainly by scientists, former astronauts, and engineers from the Institute for Advanced Study, Southwest Research Institute, Stanford University, NASA, and the space industry. As a non-governmental organization it has conducted two lines of related research to help detect NEOs that could one day strike the Earth and find the technological means to divert their path to avoid such collisions. The Foundation's current goal is to design and build a privately financed asteroid-finding space telescope, Sentinel, to be launched in 2017-2018. The Sentinel's infrared telescope, once parked in an orbit similar to that of Venus, will help identify threatening NEOs by cataloging 90% of those with diameters larger than 140 meters, as well as surveying smaller solar system objects. Collision Avoidance Strategies Data gathered by Sentinel will help identify asteroids and other NEOs that pose a risk of collision with Earth by being forwarded to scientific data sharing networks, including NASA, and academic institutions such as the Minor Planet Center. The Foundation also proposes asteroid deflection of potentially dangerous NEOs by the use of gravity tractors to divert their trajectories away from Earth, 
a concept CO invented by the organization's CEO, physicist, and former NASA astronaut Ed L. U. Nuclear Explosive Device Orbit at Home intends to provide distributed computing resources to optimize search strategy. On February 16, 2013, the project was halted due to lack of grant funding. However, on July 23, 2013, the Orbit at Home project was selected for funding by NASA's Near-Earth Object Observation Program and is to resume operations sometime in early 2014. The DASTAR project, proposed by researchers at the University of California, Santa Barbara, is a concept modular solar-powered 1M, near-infrared wavelength, laser array. The design calls for the array to eventually be approximately 1 km squared in size, with the modular design meaning that it could be launched in increments and assembled in space. In its early stages as a small array it could deal with smaller targets, assist solar sail probes and would also be useful in cleaning up space debris. The Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, currently under construction, is expected to perform a comprehensive, high-resolution survey starting in the early 2020s. On November 8, 2007, the House Committee on Science and Technology's Subcommittee on Space and Aeronautics held a hearing to examine the status of NASA's Near-Earth Object Survey Program. The prospect of using the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer was proposed by NASA officials. Air Force 2025 Planetary defense, social, economic and political implications, United States Air Force, Air Force 2025 Final Report Web Page, December 11, 1996, Belton, MJS Mitigation of Hazardous Comets and Asteroids, Cambridge University Press, 2004, ISBN 052-182-7647, ISBN 978-052-182-7645, Botk, William F. Asteroids 3, University of Arizona Space Science Series, University of Arizona Press, 2002, ISBN 081-652-2812, ISBN 978-0816522811, Burroughs, William E. The Asteroid Threat, Defending Our Planet from Deadly Near-Earth Objects, Lewis, John S. Comet and Asteroid Impact Hazards on a Populated Earth, Computer Modeling, Academic Press, 2000, ISBN 012-446-7601, ISBN 978-0124467606, Verschuer, Jared L. Impact, The Threat of Comets and Asteroids, Oxford University Press, ISBN 019-535-3277, 1997, ISBN 978-0195353273. WISE surveyed the sky in the infrared band at a very high sensitivity. Asteroids that absorb solar radiation can be observed through the infrared band. It was used to detect NEOS, in addition to performing its science goals. It is projected that WISE could detect 400 NEOS within the one-year mission. Standoff Approach Surface and Subsurface Use Comet Deflection Possibility Present Capability NEOS SAT, the Near-Earth Object Surveillance Satellite is a microsatellite launched in February 2013 by the Canadian Space Agency that will hunt for NEOS in space. Research published in the March 26, 
2009 issue of the journal Nature, describes how scientists were able to identify an asteroid in space before it entered Earth's atmosphere, enabling computers to determine its area of origin in the solar system as well as predict the arrival time and location on Earth of its shattered surviving parts. The 4-meter diameter asteroid, called 2008 TC3, was initially sighted by the Automated Catalina Sky Survey Telescope, on October 6, 2008. Computations correctly predicted that it would impact 19 hours after discovery and in the Nubian Desert of northern Sudan. A number of potential threats have been identified, such American Samoa 99942 Apophis, which in 2009 temporarily had an impact probability of about 3% for the year 2029. Additional observations revised this probability down to zero. The ellipses in the diagram at right show the likely asteroid position at closest Earth approach. At first, with only a few asteroid observations, the error ellipse is very large and includes the Earth. Further observations shrink the error ellipse, but it still includes the Earth. This raises the impact probability, since the Earth now covers a larger fraction of the error region. Finally, yet more observations shrink the ellipse until the Earth is outside the error region, and the impact probability returns to near zero. Various collision avoidance techniques have different trade-offs with respect to metrics such as overall performance, cost, operations, and technology readiness. There are various methods for changing the course of an asteroid-slash-comet. These can be differentiated by various types of attributes such as the type of mitigation, energy source, and approach strategy rendezvous, or remote station. Strategies fall into two basic sets, destruction and delay. Fragmentation concentrates on rendering the impactor harmless by fragmenting it and scattering the fragments so that they miss the earth or burn up in the atmosphere. Delay exploits the fact that both the earth and the impactor are in orbit. An impact occurs when both reach the same point in space at the same time or more correctly when some point on Earth's surface intersects the impactor's orbit when the impactor arrives. Since the Earth is approximately 12,750 km in diameter and moves at approximate 30 km per second in its orbit, it travels a distance of one planetary diameter in about 425 seconds, or slightly over 7 minutes. Delaying or advancing the impactor's arrival by times of this magnitude can, depending on the exact geometry of the impact, cause it to miss the Earth. Collision avoidance strategies can also be seen as either direct or indirect and in how rapidly they transfer energy to the object. The direct methods, such as nuclear explosives, or kinetic impactors, rapidly intercept the bolide's path. Direct methods are preferred because they are generally less costly in time and money. Their effects may be immediate, thus saving precious time. These methods would work for short notice, and long notice threats, and are most effective against solid objects that can be directly pushed, but in the case of kinetic impactors, they are not very effective against large loosely aggregated rubble piles. The indirect methods, such as gravity tractors, attaching rockets, or mass drivers, are much slower and require traveling to the object, time to change course up to 180 degrees to fly alongside it, and then take much more time to change the asteroid's path just enough so it will miss Earth. Law. Many NEOs are thought to be flying rubble piles only loosely held together by gravity, 
and a typical spacecraft-sized kinetic impactor deflection attempt might just break up the object or fragment it without sufficiently adjusting its course. If an asteroid breaks into fragments, any fragment larger than 35 meters across would not burn up in the atmosphere and itself could impact Earth. Tracking the thousands of buckshot-like fragments that could result from such an explosion would be a very daunting task, although fragmentation would be preferable to doing nothing and allowing the originally larger rubble body, which is analogous to a shot and wax slug, to impact the Earth. In CALO simulations conducted in 2011-2012, in which the rate and quantity of energy delivery were sufficiently high and matched to the size of the rubble pile, such as following a tailored nuclear explosion, results indicated that any asteroid fragments, created after the pulse of energy is delivered, would not pose a threat of re-coalescing but instead would rapidly achieve escape velocity from their parent body and therefore move out of an Earth impact trajectory. Initiating a nuclear explosive device above, on, or slightly beneath, the surface of a threatening celestial body is a potential deflection option, with the optimal detonation height dependent upon the composition and size of the object. It does not require the entire NEO to be vaporized to mitigate an impact threat. In the case of an inbound threat from a rubble pile, the standoff, or detonation height above the surface configuration, has been put forth as a means to prevent the potential fracturing of the rubble pile. The energetic neutrons and soft X-rays released by the detonation, which do not appreciably penetrate matter, are converted into thermal heat upon encountering the object's surface matter, ablatively vaporizing all line-of-sight exposed surface areas of the object to a shallow depth, turning the surface material it heats up into ejecta, and analogous to the ejecta from a chemical rocket engine exhaust, changing the velocity, or nudging, the object off course by the reaction, following Newton's third law with ejecta going one way and the object being propelled in the other. Depending on the energy of the explosive device, the resulting rocket exhaust effect, created by the high velocity of the asteroid's vaporized mass ejecta, coupled with the object's small reduction in mass, would produce enough of a change in the object's orbit in order to avoid hitting the Earth. Kinetic Impact Asteroid Gravity Tractor Ion Beam Shepard A hypervelocity asteroid mitigation mission for emergency response has been proposed. If the object is very large but is still a loosely held together rubble pile, a solution is to detonate one or a series of nuclear explosive devices alongside the asteroid, at a 20 meter or greater standoff height above its surface so as not to fracture the potentially loosely held together object. Providing this standoff strategy was done far enough in advance, the force from a sufficient number of nuclear blasts would be enough to alter the object's trajectory to avoid an impact, according to computer simulations and experimental evidence from meteorites exposed to the thermal X-ray pulses of the Z-machine. The 1964 book Islands in Space calculates that the nuclear megatonnage necessary for several deflection scenarios exists. In 1967, graduate students under Professor Paul Sandorf at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology were tasked with designing a method to prevent a hypothetical 18-month distant impact on Earth by the 1.4-kilometer-wide asteroid 1566 Icarus, an object which makes regular close approaches to Earth, sometimes as close as 16 lunar distances. To achieve the task within the time frame and with limited material knowledge of the asteroid's composition, a variable standoff system was conceived. 
This would have used a number of modified Saturn V rockets sent on interception courses and the creation of a handful of nuclear explosive devices in the 100 megaton energy range coincidentally. The maximum yield of the Soviet's 1961 Tsar Bomba if a uranium tamper had been used as each rocket vehicle's payload. The design study was later published as Project Icarus which served as the inspiration for the 1979 film Meteor. A NASA analysis of deflection alternatives, conducted in 2007, stated. Nuclear standoff explosions are assessed to be 10-100 times more effective than the non-nuclear alternatives analyzed in this study. Other techniques involving the surface or subsurface use of nuclear explosives may be more efficient, but they run an increased risk of fracturing the target NEO. They also carry higher development and operations risks. Use of focused solar energy in the same year NASA released a study where the asteroid Apophis was assumed to have a much lower rubble pile density and therefore mass than is now known, and in the study, it is assumed to be on an impact trajectory with Earth for the year 2029. Under these hypothetical conditions, the report determines that a cradle spacecraft would be sufficient to deflect it from Earth impact. This conceptual spacecraft contains six B83 physics packages, each set for their maximum 1.2 megaton yield that are bundled together and lofted by an Ares V vehicle sometime in the 2020s, with each B83 being fused to detonate over the asteroid's surface at a height of 100 m, one after the other, with hour-long intervals between each successive detonation. The results of this study indicated that a single employment of this option can deflect NEOS of two years before impact, and larger NEOS with at least five years warning. These effectiveness figures are considered to be conservative by its authors and only the thermal X-ray output of the B83 devices was considered, while neutron heating was neglected for ease of calculation purposes. The director of the Asteroid Deflection Research Center at Iowa State University, WE, who had published kinetic impactor deflection studies in the past, began in 2011 to study strategies that could deal with 50 to 500 meter diameter objects when the time to Earth impact was under a year or so. He concluded that to provide the required energy, a nuclear explosion or other events that could deliver the same power, are the only methods that can work against a very large asteroid within these time constraints. This work resulted in the creation of a conceptual hypervelocity asteroid intercept vehicle, which combines a kinetic impactor to create an initial crater for a follow-up subsurface nuclear detonation within that initial crater which would generate a high degree of efficiency in the conversion of the nuclear energy that is released in the detonation into propulsion energy to the asteroid. Another proposed approach along similar lines is the use of a surface detonating nuclear device, in place of the prior mentioned kinetic impactor, in order to create the initial crater, with the resulting crater that forms then again being used as a rocket nozzle to channel succeeding nuclear detonations. At the 2014 NASA Innovative Advanced Concepts Conference, we and his colleagues stated that, we have the solution, using our baseline concept, to be able to mitigate the asteroid impact threat, with any range of warning. For example, According to their computer models, with a warning time of 30 days a 1,000-foot-wide asteroid would be neutralized by using a single HAIV, with less than 0.1% of the destroyed object's mass potentially striking Earth, which by comparison would be more than acceptable. As of 2015 we has collaborated with the Danish Emergency Asteroid Defense Project 
which ultimately intends to crowdsource sufficient funds to design, build and store a non-nuclear HAIV spacecraft as planetary insurance. For threatening asteroids too large and slash or too close to Earth impact to effectively be deflected by the non-nuclear HAIV approach, nuclear explosive devices with 5% of the explosive yield in this configuration then when compared to the standoff strategy are intended to be swapped in, under international oversight, when conditions arise that necessitate it. Following the 1994 Shoemaker-Levy 9 comet impacts with Jupiter, Edward Teller proposed to a collective of U.S. and Russian ex-Cold War weapons designers in a 1995 planetary defense workshop meeting at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, that they collaborate to design a 1 gigaton nuclear explosive device which would be equivalent to the kinetic energy of a 1 kilometer diameter asteroid. The theoretical 1 GT device would weigh about 2530 tons, light enough to be lifted on the Energia rocket and it could be used to instantaneously vaporize a 1 kilometer asteroid, divert the paths of extinction event class asteroids within a few months of short notice, while with one year notice at an interception location no closer than Jupiter, it would also be capable of dealing with the even rarer short-period comets which can come out of the Kuiper belt and transit past Earth orbit within two years. For comets of this class, with a maximum estimated 100 km diameter, Karen served as the hypothetical threat. In 2013, the related national laboratories of the U.S. and Russia signed a deal that includes an intent to cooperate on defense from asteroids. An April 2014 GA report notes that the NNSA is retaining CAN sub-assemblies in an indeterminate state pending a senior-level government evaluation of their use in planetary defense against Earth-bound asteroids. In its FY2015 budget request, the NNSA noted that the 9MTB53 component disassembly was delayed, leading some observers to conclude they might be the warhead CSAs being retained for potential planetary defense purposes. Following the total disassembly of all 25MT high-yield B41S in 1976, the B53 is the highest yielding U.S. device presently in the enduring stockpile. The use of nuclear explosive devices is an international issue and will need to be addressed by the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space. The 1996 Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty technically bans nuclear weapons in space. However it is unlikely that a nuclear explosive device, fused to be detonated only upon interception with a threatening celestial object, with the sole intent of preventing that celestial body from impacting Earth would be regarded as an unpeaceful use of space, or that the explosive device sent to mitigate an Earth impact, explicitly designed to prevent harm to come to life would fall under the classification of a weapon. Mass Driver Conventional Rocket Engine The Impact of a Massive Object such as a spacecraft or even another near-Earth object, is another possible solution to a pending neo-impact. An object with a high mass close to the Earth could be sent out into a collision course with the asteroid, knocking it off course. When the asteroid is still far from the Earth, a means of deflecting the asteroid is to directly alter its momentum by colliding a spacecraft with the asteroid. Asteroid Laser Ablation A NASA analysis of deflection alternatives, conducted in 2007, stated Other proposals Deflection technology concerns Planetary defense timeline Fictional representations Film Literature television video games 
Non-nuclear kinetic impactors are the most mature approach and could be used in some deflection-slash-mitigation scenarios, especially for NEOs that consist of a single small, solid body. The European Space Agency is studying the preliminary design of two space missions for 2020, named AIDA and the earlier Don Quixote, and if flown, they would be the first intentional asteroid deflection mission ever designed. ESA's Advanced Concepts team has also demonstrated theoretically that a deflection of 99,942 apophis could be achieved by sending a simple spacecraft weighing less than one ton to impact against the asteroid. During a trade-off study one of the leading researchers argued that a strategy called kinetic impactor deflection was more efficient than others. The European Union's NEO Shield 2 mission is also primarily studying the kinetic impactor mitigation method. The principle of the kinetic impactor mitigation method is that the NEO or asteroid is deflected following an impact from an impactor spacecraft. The principle of momentum transfer is used, as the impactor crashes into the NEO at a very high velocity of 10 km per second or more. The mass and velocity of the impactor are transferred to the NEO, causing a change in velocity and therefore making it deviate from its course slightly. One more alternative to explosive deflection is to move the asteroid slowly over a time. Tiny constant thrust accumulates to deviate an object sufficiently from its predicted course. Edward T. L. U. and Stanley G. Love have proposed using a large heavy unmanned spacecraft hovering over an asteroid to gravitationally pull the latter into a non-threatening orbit. The spacecraft and the asteroid mutually attract one another. If the spacecraft counters the force towards the asteroid by, e.g., an ion thruster, the net effect is that the asteroid is accelerated towards the spacecraft and thus slightly deflected from its orbit. While slow, this method has the advantage of working irrespective of the asteroid composition or spin rate rubble pile asteroids would be difficult to deflect by means of nuclear detonations while a pushing device would be hard or inefficient to mount on a fast rotating asteroid. A gravity tractor would likely have to spend several years beside the asteroid to be effective. A NASA analysis of deflection alternatives, conducted in 2007, stated, Slow push mitigation techniques are the most expensive, have the lowest level of technical readiness, and their ability to both travel to and divert a threatening NEO would be limited unless mission durations of many years to decades are possible. Another contactless asteroid deflection technique has been recently proposed by C. Bombardelli and J. Pelles from the Technical University of Madrid. The method involves the use of a low divergence ion thruster pointed at the asteroid from a nearby hovering spacecraft. The momentum transmitted by the ions reaching the asteroid surface produces a slow but continuous force that can deflect the asteroid in a similar way as done by the gravity tractor but with a lighter spacecraft. H. J. Melosh proposed deflecting an asteroid or comet by focusing solar energy onto its surface to create thrust from the resulting vaporization of material or to amplify the Yarkovsky effect. Over a span of months or years enough solar radiation can be directed onto the object to deflect it. This method would first require the construction of a space station with a system of gigantic lenses. Then the station would be transported toward the Sunday. A mass driver is an system on the asteroid to eject material into space thus giving the object a slow steady push and decreasing its mass. A mass driver is designed to work as a very low specific impulse system, which in general uses a lot of propellant, but very little power. The idea is that when using local material as propellant, 
the amount of propellant is not as important as the amount of power, which is likely to be limited. Another possibility is to use a mass driver on the Moon aimed at the NEO to take advantage of the Moon's orbital velocity and inexhaustible supply of rock bullets. Attaching any spacecraft propulsion device would have a similar effect of giving a push, possibly forcing the asteroid onto a trajectory that takes it away from Earth. An in-space rocket engine that is capable of imparting an impulse of 10.6 ns, will have a relatively small effect on a relatively small asteroid that has a mass of roughly a million times more. Chapman, Derda, and Gold's white paper calculates deflections using existing chemical rockets delivered to the asteroid. Such direct force rocket engines are typically proposed to use highly efficient electrically powered spacecraft propulsion, such as ion thrusters or VASIMR. Similar to the effects of a nuclear device, it is thought possible to focus sufficient laser energy on the surface of an asteroid to cause flash vaporization slash ablation to create either an impulse or to ablate away the asteroid mass. This concept was articulated in the 1995 Spacecast 2020 white paper Preparing for Planetary Defense, and the 1996 Air Force 2025 white paper Planetary Defense, Catastrophic Health Insurance for Planet Earth Early publications include C.R. Phipps' Orion Concept from 1996, Colonel Jonathan W. Camel's 2000 monograph Using Lasers in Space, Laser Orbital Debris Removal and Asteroid Deflection, and NASA's 2005 Concept Comet Asteroid Protection System. Typically such systems require a significant amount of power, such as would be available from a space-based solar power satellite. A recent proposal is the Philip Lubin's DESTAR proposal. Carl Sagan, in his book Pale Blue Dot, expressed concern about deflection technology that any method capable of deflecting impactors away from Earth could also be abused to divert non-threatening bodies toward the planet. Considering the history of genocidal political leaders and the possibility of the bureaucratic obscuring of any such project's true goals to most of its scientific participants, he judged the Earth at greater risk from a man-made impact than a natural one. Sagan instead suggested that deflection technology only be developed in an actual emergency situation. All low-energy delivery deflection technologies have inherent fine control and steering capability, making it possible to add just the right amount of energy to steer an asteroid originally destined for a mere close approach toward a specific Earth target. According to Rusty Schwickart, the gravitational tractor method is controversial because, during the process of changing an asteroid's trajectory, the point on the Earth where it could most likely hit would be slowly shifted across different countries. Thus, the threat for the entire planet would be minimized at the cost of some specific state's security. In Schwickart's opinion, Choosing the way the asteroid should be dragged would be a tough diplomatic decision. Analysis of the uncertainty involved in nuclear deflection shows that the ability to protect the planet does not imply the ability to target the planet. A nuclear explosion that changes an asteroid's velocity by 10 meters slash second would be adequate to push it out of an Earth-impacting orbit. However, if the uncertainty of the velocity change was more than a few percent, there would be no chance of directing the asteroid to a particular target. Asteroid or comet impacts are a common subgenre of disaster fiction, and such stories typically feature some attempt successful or unsuccessful to prevent the catastrophe. Most involve trying to destroy or explosively redirect an object. Bibliography General